us in worship. Thank you for my sweet girl, Savannah, uh, reading the scriptures, and Josh in the back, uh, helping us with uh, the audio and the, uh, the video. And so I want to, uh, if you don't mind, uh, just write in your home, uh, Matthew chapter 6, starting in verse 1, um, thinking about, you know, I really struggled with, with what to preach this morning. It would be one thing to bring a message on hope and to think about everything that Jesus has done for us, you know, just thinking about being in the midst of the coronavirus and having our worlds turned upside down. And I don't know about you, but I'm kind of sick of talking about the coronavirus. And, you know, it's, it's on the news. And, and don't get me wrong, we, we desperately need to pay attention to it and to, to heed the warnings of, of uh, our president and vice president and state leaders, local leaders. But at the same time, I, I wanted to bring a sense of normalcy. And so, you know, this is the, the first Sunday. I've been back in this pulpit, and I'm preaching to an empty room this morning and, and preaching to you online. And, and so, I, you know, where to preach? And so I just felt like, you know what, maybe we should just try to go back normal. And we've been preaching verse, or I've been preaching verse by verse uh, through the Gospel of Matthew. And so why don't we just pick right up where we are and, and we'll just, uh, we'll do our very best to um, treat it like a normal service. And so Matthew 6 and verse 1, and even going to ask you, even in the midst of your home, that you would stand up to honor the reading of God's Word. Matthew chapter 6 and verse 1, you'll find these similar words all the way down <laughs> to verse 18. Verse 1 really is... The, it's a summary of the first 18 verses. Beware of practicing your righteousness before other people in order to be seen by them. For then you will have no reward from your Father who is in heaven. And thus, when you give to the needy, don't sound the trumpet before you as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and, and in the streets that they may be praised by others. But truly, I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you give to the needy, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, uh, so that your giving may be in secret. And your Father who sees in secret, he will reward you. And when you pray, you must not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners that they may be seen by others. Truly, I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you pray, go into your inner room and shut the door and pray to your Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees in secret, he will reward you. And when you pray, do not heap up empty phrases as the Gentiles do, for they think that they will be heard for their many words. Now, don't be like them. For your Father, he, he knows what we need even before we ask him. So we pray then like this. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For if you forgive others their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. And when you fast, do not look gloomy like the hypocrites, for they disfigure their faces, that their fasting may be seen by others. But truly I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you fast, anoint your head and wash your face, that your fasting may not be seen by others, but by your Father who is in secret. And your Father, who sees in secret, he will reward you. Let's pray together. Father, in Jesus' name, I pray that you would just take the reading of your word and, and even just the explanation of it, Lord. And Father, you would use it to, to minister to, to your people, uh, Father, for your glory. And it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. You guys go ahead and be seated. Here's what I want to do, and you can notice it in your Bible. There's a, there's a comparison in the text 
between those who are faithful in their walk with Jesus. He, he, Jesus uh, gives us a, uh, not necessarily how we are to, to give and pray and fast, but he gives us the motivation of why we should do this. And he compares it with the Pharisees, the hypocrites. And so what I want to do is just make two comparisons uh, uh, between these two, and then very briefly walk through this idea of, of how we're to give, why we're to give, why we should pray in a certain way. Uh, walk through this idea of fasting. Uh, but I'm just going to be honest, it's going to be from like a, a 30,000 feet view, okay? It is, it's going to be way up in the skies. Now, now notice when he does this contrast, he, he calls he calls the religious leaders, the Pharisees, he calls them hypocrites. And now this idea of hypocrites, it, it speaks of wearing a mask. It, 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 think about an actor uh, in, in Hollywood. And they play the part. It, it, you know, here, here's an example. Tom Hanks. Tom Hanks has starred in every movie under the sun, it seems like. But just think about Tom Hanks. Um, Woody in the Tory story, Tory story. Tom Hanks. We, we don't get mad at Tom Hanks for being Woody. Uh, what was the movie where he, he landed the plane in the Hudson River? Uh, hey, here's Facebook interaction. I don't remember who, what his name is, so maybe you could just type it there on the screen, but it's the guy who, who he landed the plane into the Hudson. He, uh, Tom Hanks just played that actor. Tom Hanks is far as dumb. I remember that's probably my most well-known movie of Tom Hanks. And, and then, hey, here's another one you, you can help me with. The one where he was kidnapped, there were pirates, and he was a, a captain of a big boat, and, and he was kidnapped by the pirates off of Somalia, I think it was Somalia. Uh, you can tell me who he was, but, but we don't get mad at Tom Hanks for those things because we know that he is just, he's an actor playing a part. But you know what we get mad at? If I've got a best friend and I think they're my best friend, and then I find out they're talking about me behind my back, like stabbing me in my back, I get mad at that because why? They pretended to be somebody they weren't. They pretended to be my friend. And all the while, they were not. And I don't have to say this. I don't have to go into a lot of depth. But you know, Christians, we've got a, a bad reputation among some people being hypocrites. Uh, a lot of people, they'll, they'll look at us as, as Christians and they'll, they'll, they'll say one or two things about us if, if they think we're being hypocrites. Number one, they'll say something like this. You know, Savannah, she says that she's a, a Christian, that I see her doing so many things that don't line up with God's Word. I mean, I, I see her out there and, and, and she's lying and she's stealing and she's cheating. Uh, that is, that is, that is, that's not a Christian. Y'all should see Savannah by the camera, behind the camera. She's making all kinds of faces at me right now. Or, or they'll say this. You know, he's a Christian, but I never see him acting like Jesus. Uh, that, that, that Leanne, man, she just doesn't have a heart for those who are in need. Uh, she, she's never concerned about those in poverty. She, she's not concerned, uh, and she just she doesn't love people the way Jesus does. And honestly, both of those can be situations where we as Christians, we act like hypocrites. Because even the word Christian, we're, we're called to be little Christ. We're, we're called to follow in the example that Jesus set for us. And so, should, should we practice good moral behavior? Absolutely. But our morality is not what makes us followers of Christ. It's the fact that we've repented of our sins and trusted in Christ. And then, if we're, man, if we're followers of Christ, we, we need to be doing the things that Jesus has called us to do. Even in this text, he assumes that his followers will be the people who that give to the needy. His followers will be the people to pray. His followers will be the people that fast. And if we're not doing those things, there, there's something about us in, in our walk with Jesus that we're not being faithful in. And so it matters how we live our life. But the heart of this text, Danny Aiken said it this way, uh, the matter of the heart, or the heart of the matter is the matter of the heart. What 
Jesus is after this, in this text is, is not what we do as followers of Jesus. It's why we do it. And so let me give you these contrasts really quick. And then we'll walk through this idea of, of giving and praying and fasting. And so let's contrast hypocritical living versus uh, righteous living. Here, here's, here would be the first contrast I would say. Hypocritical living is focused on receiving glory from man, while righteous living is focused on giving God the glory. Now you see this in, all, in, in every situation, the, uh, the, the giving, the praying, and the fasting. The, the hypocrite does these things so that he may be praised by others. And, and so the one who prays does it so that he can be seen by others. The one who fasts does it so that he may be seen by others. And so in each of these situations, the hypocrite wants the focus to be on self. He wants others to look at him and see him as, as somebody that is important in society. He has a sense of pride, a sense of self-worth that is tied up in how everybody else looks at him. His heart searches not for the approval of God, not for the glory of God. He has a heart that wants to be exalted in the eyes of mankind. Now, now, let me be clear. Jesus is not saying that we can't do things so that others see them. You remember Matthew 5, I think it's uh, 13, 14, 15, and 16. Christians, man, we, we're called to be the salt of the earth. We're called to be the light of the world. Remember what Jesus said? Let your light shine before others so that others might see your good works. You see what he's saying? Others need to see your good works and give Glory to your Father who is in heaven. What's the difference? It's a matter of the heart. Why you do what you do, it matters in the kingdom of God. It matters to Jesus. So, so Jesus says, if you're doing these things so that you can be seen by others, so that you can receive the glory, you're doing it for the wrong reason. You're doing it so that you can get the glory, not the Father. Number two. The hypocrite receives immediate praise from men, but the righteous receive, now listen, delayed but certain rewards from the Father who is in heaven. Uh, again, uh, notice every situation, Jesus speaks of an immediate reward. If you've got your Bibles, just notice this. Uh, the end of verse 2. Truly, I say to you, uh, they have received their reward. The end of verse 5. And truly, I say to you, they have received their reward. The end of verse 16. Truly, I say to you, they have received their reward. There, there is an immediacy to their reward. It happens then. It happens now. It's a here and now. It's, a, it's tempting in the world we live in uh, to receive instant gratification by the way other people look at us. We want to be seen. We want to be liked. You know where we see it more than, more than anywhere else? <clears throat> social media. People will put posts up on social media for no reason other than they want to see and get the, the gratification of people liking their posts. And, and it becomes a competition. You can take somebody that, that puts a post up on Snapchat, they take a picture, they take a selfie, uh, they use 13 filters. They spend 20 minutes doctoring the, uh, the, the post. They get five likes, and somebody takes a, uh, a picture in their pajamas with their hair up, no makeup, and they get 500. And the one who took 20 minutes to paint their post, they're jealous. Right? Y'all say amen. amen. Everybody in the room, say amen. 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 Everybody say amen. Why? Because we've got this jealousy in our hearts. We've got this pride in our hearts that we... We want the approval of man, and social media has just made it possible so that we can receive instant gratification. So because our heart is so deceitful, because we crave the approval and, and just, the, uh, just the applause of man, it's possible for us to give, not because we want to please God, but because deep down we want somebody else to recognize us and to give us the glory. Or it's possible to pray in, in church or in a public setting and, and you heap up this long prayer because you want others to think highly of you. Or, or hey, we've been fasting 
um, just for several months now, the, the second Monday of every month, it's possible that you could fast it and you go into work and somebody brings us a lunch and, and you look at your, your, uh, your, your co-worker and you say, man, that looks really, really good. But you know, I'm fasting today. I can't eat. Hey, you ain't got to tell nobody what you're doing. Just say, hey, that looks really good. I'm not eating today. It, the matter of the heart. That's what Jesus is after. Everybody can think highly of you, but you have your reward. John Stott said it this way. The hypocrites who seek applause, you'll get it. But you, you've got every reward that you're going to get. Nothing, Father, is due to them, nothing but judgment on the last day. You compare that with the righteous. He prays for the audience of God. He gives to point others to Jesus. He fasts quietly before the all-seeing eye of God. This one, God says that he will, God sees it in secret, but he will certainly be rewarded. Now, I don't know what the reward will be. I don't know what the reward will look like. Only that God promises that he will bring or give a reward. So take it for what it's worth. The reward of heaven is far greater than any earthly reward that you'll ever receive. Again, Dr. Rafe said it this way. You may not see God, but he sees you. He sees everything, and his opinion matters most. The Father who sees the silent gift, the private prayer, and the unnoticed fast, he will bless you with heavenly rewards. Why is it this way? Because it reveals our heart. You know, Jesus says in, in chapter 7, we'll get to it in, in a few weeks. Jesus says in chapter 7, not, not everybody who says to me, who calls me Lord, Lord, not everybody's going to enter into the kingdom of God. And you see what Jesus has given us here is, is a good test to see if we're in the faith. Do, do we really live for the glory and honor of God? Or do we live so that we might be exalted among men? One road is wide and leads to the glory of self, and the other road is narrow and leads to the glory and exaltation of God. We know which one that we should choose, but our hearts make it awfully hard. So here's what we do. Let, let's walk through each one of these sections that Jesus refers to. Three areas that Jesus said, hey, if you're a Christian, these should be areas of your life that you are involved in. A faithful Jew, he would be faithful in his almsgiving, he would be faithful in his prayer life, he would be faithful in his fasting. And, and so here's the first thing I would say. Give in secret if you're prone, if you're likely to seek the approval of man. Now, here's what he says, verse 3. But when you get to the need, don't let your left hand know what your right hand is doing so that your giving may be seen in secret. So, in other words, if you struggle with this idea of, of who's going to get the glory, Jesus said, don't. It should be such a secret that your left hand doesn't even know what your right hand is doing. Why? So that nobody will know. If nobody knows what you're giving, if you, if, if maybe even your bride or, or your spouse doesn't know, there's no way that anybody can exalt you. Now, again, let me go back and say this. Not all giving has to be done in secret. Giving is a way in which we we glorify God. Here's an illustration, Acts, Acts 2. When, when Barnabas sold his land and, and gave it to the church, you know that the church knew about it? And it wasn't done in secret. Everybody knew about that. The same thing with Acts 5, and Acts is fire. The church knew what the land had been sold for and, and what they should have given. And, and you see, we, we like to look at every other spiritual gift that there is and say, man, we can benefit from that. Somebody who has a spiritual gift of service, we know when they serve, and it encourages us and blesses us when they serve. Somebody who has this spiritual gift of evangelism, it challenges me when I see somebody faithfully using that gift. And the gift of giving is no different. When, when we have the gift of giving and we do it not for our glory, but for the glory of God, it is a challenge and it is a benefit to 
the kingdom. But if you're doing it for your glory and not the glory of God, go let your right hand know what your left hand is doing. Okay? And, and, and so uh, give in secret if you're prone to seek the approval of man and not the approval of God. Now let's move to prayer. Uh, starting in verse 5, we'll work our way through that. Let me make three statements on prayer. Statement number one, verse 6. A private prayer should, must, precede public prayer. Now, I don't know if the hypocrites were faithful in their private prayer lives or not, but I can tell you that if you never take time to consistently pray privately, you're not someone that needs to be praying publicly. And oftentimes, if you don't pray privately and you have the platform to pray publicly, it will show. I've got a friend. In fact, I've heard this from multiple pastors that when the ushers will come forward and to take up the offering, depending upon which usher is going to pray that day, the pastor says, I can almost tell you verbatim what he's going to say before he prays. I don't know anybody's heart, but I can almost tell you that, man, if you're not praying privately, you have no platform should have no platform to pray publicly as well. No private prayer life should equal no public prayer life. Jesus said there are times we need to go into our room, we need to shut the door, and our Father who sees in secret, He will reward us in heaven. No private prayer life, no public prayer life. Number two, Every prayer should be a sincere prayer. Uh, verse 7, uh, when we pray, we, we shouldn't offer up empty phrases uh, like the Gentiles, thinking they'll be heard for their many words. And we don't have to babble on in our prayer life to make it look good. We simply have to uh, go before our Father, get on our faces before Him, and lift up our burdens, lift up our requests, lift up our praises to Him. He, he desires to have communion with us. He will lead us and he will guide us as we pray. Uh, most of you know this. I'm going to walk down for a second because I don't have my water. And so I'm going to get real close into the camera. Hope you guys are doing well. Most of y'all know this. I went to the uh, on a mission trip. Just got back uh, last Monday from the island of Solor in, in, in Indonesia. <coughs> Indonesia is the largest Muslim nation on the earth. We stayed with a, with a guy who, who's a Muslim, his name is Danny, super duper good guy. We were sitting around talking one night. We were actually with Danny and um, one of his friends, Nigel. Nigel uh, is a teacher in the school, uh, teaches the Quran to the students in the, in the Muslim school. And this idea of what time they get up in the morning it came up, and and, and and you know, staying in Danny's house, we, we know that Danny got up early. And, and so we asked Danny, hey Danny, what time do you get up? Three o'clock, sometimes three thirty. Danny, what are, what are you getting up at three thirty for? Oh, I pray. Nigel, what time do you get up? Three thirty, four o'clock. Nigel, why, why do you get up early? Oh, I pray. Now, I know the Muslim call to prayer goes off at 4.30 uh, in, in the morning. It, it, it sounds to the whole village. It made me feel about this high in, in my walk with Christ. Somebody who claims that Jesus is the Savior, that, that he's the Son of God, that he came and gave his life for me, he, he invites us to come boldly to the throne of grace and to pray. And I'm sitting with two guys that I would love to see you become followers of Jesus. And they're more committed in their prayer life than I am. Prayer should be sincere. People get up at 3 o'clock in the morning have sincere prayer, really committed in their walk with Christ. Number three, all prayer should point to the glory of God. Now, I don't have time to to walk through um, what we call the Lord's Prayer here. 
And, but, I, but I will say this, uh, we'll probably go uh, do another live stream maybe on Wednesday night, maybe Tuesday night, and, and just walk through this text. And just to go more in depth on the Lord's Prayer. But John Piper pointed out something that I never really thought of before. Here's what John Piper said. He said that nothing is more clear and unshakable to him than the purpose of the universe is for the hallowing of God's name. Now, so when Jesus says we pray like this, it, Jesus is not saying that, that we just need to repeat this prayer. He just walks us through really a model prayer. And so when he begins and says, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, what he is saying there is, is, is our Father, we want, to, we want to live for your glory. It speaks of honoring the name of God as holy. Because when you honor the name, you're honoring the person. And so John Piper says, His kingdom, so when we pray, His kingdom come, we're praying that His kingdom come. Why? And so that we might glorify Him. We pray that His will would be done. We pray it for that, that we might glorify Him. And we might have grand, sustained life for that reason, that we might glorify His name. Our sins are forgiven for that reason, that we might glorify His name. We, we, we escape our temptations for that reason that we might glorify his name. This whole idea of, of praying for the glory of the name of God it encompasses the entire prayer. So God's glory is ultimately that is the reason in which we pray. We want everything in that, pr in that prayer to be fulfilled ultimately for the glory of God. I'll aid you in that. Nobody else will. I'll aid you in that. Finally, Jesus deals with fasting. Get down to verses 16 through 18. In the Old Testament, the, 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 the only day prescribed in the Old Testament as a day of fasting was the day of atonement. But the, a, a faithful Pharisee would fast on Mondays and Thursdays. The, the, the time of the fast, the, how, many, how often we fast, it's not the point. Why we fast is. Why do we fast? Most of the time we fast because we want something from God. But at the end of the day, there's nothing we should want more than for the glory of God to come down. Uh, we want to see His glory revealed. We want to see others come and worship Him. And special movements of God typically come when His people pray and fast. There was a time in, in, when Jesus was living Jesus sent the disciples out to go do ministry. They encountered someone who was demon possessed, and they couldn't they couldn't cast out the demon. And they came to Jesus. Jesus had to go and cast out the demon. You know what Jesus said? This kind can't come out except by prayer and fasting. You know this. When Jesus began his ministry, the Spirit led him into the wilderness for forty days to be tempted in uh, by the devil, but he, he prayed and he fasted for 40 days. Oftentimes, great movements of God come when people are fasting. Acts chapter 10. Peter is fasting when he sees the sheep come down and he's, he's to kill the pig and to eat. It's symbolizing is that the barrier between Jews and Gentiles had been broken and and the gospel is going to all the earth. Acts 13. At the church of Antioch, they're praying and fasting when the Spirit led them to, to anoint uh, Paul and Barnabas to go on the first missionary journey. When the people of God are serious and they seek the glory of God in their prayer life and in their fasting life, Spirit of God does great and mighty things. But why do we do it? Not for us. Not so that we can be seen by others and that others might exalt us. We do it because there's a God in heaven that loved us enough that he sent his son to be our savior. God stepped out of heaven, stepped into human flesh in the person of Jesus, lived for 33 years in a perfect life Gave his life willingly on a cross. 
ultimately, if you want to give well, you want to help the needy, you want to pray well, you want to fast well, you need to imitate Christ. No one has ever given like he gave. All the way to the point of his death. And in his giving, billions of people have had their lives changed. He prayed well. Whether the ministry was good or bad, he took time to spend time in communion with his father. He fasted for 40 days as he began his ministry. Simply spending time with the Father. Living like, living like Jesus, with the heart of Jesus, takes you to the presence of Jesus. And what reward could be greater than the presence of Jesus living in your life? And, and so let me ask you a question. Invitation is a little bit different. And so let me just talk briefly how you can respond to our text this morning. First of all, you, you may be listening, watching, here in the room. And you're not involved in any of these areas. Now, you don't pray. You don't fast. You see somebody in need, you don't help. And maybe today the Spirit of God is just pointing, putting His finger on your life and, and showing you you don't do these things because you're not my child. Maybe you said a prayer when, when you were a child, but, but, but you just you have no appetite in your life for the things of God, to, to be the person that Jesus has called you to be. And right now, the Spirit of God is saying to you, you're not my son, but I love you and Jesus has made a way that, that you can be his we can, you can be his son. You can be the a son of the Father. If you repent of your sins and place your faith in Jesus. And honestly, you're in a better situation than the second person I'm getting ready to talk about. And the second person is this. You're a hypocrite like the Pharisees. Uh, those who think they're religious are always have a, always have a more difficult time of uh, repenting because they think they're good, and you're just like the Pharisees. You, 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 you do these things because you want to be seen. And if that's you this morning, that you need salvation, just like the first person. Uh, you, you can't. A Pharisee desperately needed the gospel of grace in their life. And you see, you're not a child of God because of what you do. You're a child of God because of the grace of Jesus that he came and he gave his life for you. And the only way you can enter into eternal life is, is not because you do good things, but because you trust in the grace of Christ. You, by faith, believe in him. And if that's you, man, you're not going to get at this altar, but, but make wherever you are an altar. And surrender your life to Jesus. Surrender your good works to Jesus. And, and, and just simply by faith accept him as your Savior. Maybe you are a believer. But you've gotten to this place where you're living for the glory of your own life. And not the glory of God. It's so easy to fall into. Our hearts are so desperately wicked. And, and man, even as a follower of Jesus, we can fall into this this. This idea where we want to be applauded by others. And maybe that's where you find yourself. You're just struggling. You want people to notice you. And this morning, the Spirit of God is just working you and showing you, hey, you've gone too far. Just right where you are. Repent of that. And then here's my final suggestion from this text. You go and do and imitate Christ. He would have you imitate him. You've got a wonderful opportunity to share the love of Christ with our neighbors and our loved ones. There's not a more needy person on the face of the earth than those who need Christ. And in the midst of, of our world being turned upside down, people need the love of Jesus right now. Go. Don't do it for your own glory. Do it for the glory of God. Pray for your neighbors. Take it. Take your time. You know, 
we don't have to set a day as a church for you to fast. It's, it, is, it is okay with the Father if you initiate your own fast. Amen? Take a day and fast for his glory. So here's what I want you to do. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to close us in prayer. And if the Spirit of God has just worked in your life, here's what I want to ask you to do. Send us a message out of the church. Nobody's going to know it. Just, just, just myself. And, and let, let us know the decision that you've made today. Because, hey, you need to celebrate with your church family. And we're, we're, we're not gathered in the room together. And so uh, I, this is the way in which we celebrate what God has done in our midst. So let us know and we can share it with others uh, just about the, the work of God in your own life this day. So let's pray together. When I get finished praying, we're going to go offline, but we're trust that the Father will use it, uh, His Word, and, and then worship through music for His glory. So let's pray. Father, thank You for this day. And thank You for the opportunity, Lord, even that I have, and to be Your vessel to open up Your Word this morning. Father, I trust in Your Word, whether it's 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 really talking to a camera and going out online or, or talking to a room of people, Lord. I, I just trust the truthfulness of your word, that your word will not return void. Father, I'm trusting that, that you're going to take it and use it in the hearts of those who have listened and taken the time to watch. And, and Father, I'm asking that you would use it uh, at the end of the day for your glory. Father, protect our hearts. Lord, it's, it's so easy to fall into, into self-gratification, self-glorification. And, and so, Lord, trust, help our hearts, Lord, to be guarded for your glory. Father, I love you, and I thank you for loving us. And it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Hey, before we go offline... And this is not in the notes, it was just in my quiet time this morning, something I read. The, the word righteous. When, when you read that word righteous in the scriptures, it's a relational word. We, we have no righteousness apart from our relationship with Christ. When I read that this morning, I'm thinking about this passage. It just kind of brought it home for me. Hey, if we're in faithful relationship with the Father through the Son, you know what Jesus said, John 15, we're abiding in Him. We'll do great works. He will do great works in us. We want our righteousness to be lived in a way that is pleasing to the Father and it points others to Him abiding in Christ. It's the only way. We can really make a difference. Thank you guys for attending. Hope you have a great day. And we'll talk to you soon.